Best three. Best three things. Uh, okay, let's start with uh, Celeste. What's one thing you liked about The Parent Trap? 1961. Sorry. Not the year 1961. The movie The Parent Trap from 1961, in case that wasn't clear. It was. Okay, good. <laughs> so I really liked the end scene, the camping. Oh, not, yeah. not the end end scene, but like the entire segment of the camping because it just was very humorous to me, and I think it played off the... There's a certain feel to movies from this time frame, and it really played up in that time. Like, uh. that that was just... It was really funny, and the, the tricks, you're like, they're predictable, but they were humorous, and they're kind of harmless, so... And it was kind of like... It was, it was kind of nice that it was a bookend to the beginning, where that started at camping, yeah. used a lot of the same uh, scheming oh, and stuff. Yeah. So that that was yeah, kind of nice. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of so course I, I think, knew that. Says Paul. I think the most not harmless one was the the giving her sugar water for mosquitoes because you know malaria is a thing. But <laughs> in the states at that time, I don't know about that, but I suppose other other diseases for oh sure. Oh my gosh, when they put the honey on the bear, the I can't believe. Bear I mean, and the bear was licking the feet. I can't believe the actress was okay with that because how would they prevent the bears from starting eating like, like gnawing, gnawing on the feet? Could well could it have been a, really, like a dummy or something maybe? I really hope there was. Those only look one like tank. real feet. They look like her feet. <laughs> they were CG. Somebody had painted Guys, those toenails. They're CG. Toenails. CG feet. <laughs> CG feet back in '61. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the technology. They didn't yeah. have CG yet. Um, but yeah, it definitely like. Did they not nibble her toes? I really hope they got that in one take. <laughs> yeah. I would have been worried about that as well. Uh, Ashley, was the camping or some other p component of this film uh, make your like list? Well, camping definitely did not. It wasn't up on the top. But let me tell you what did. Actually, a big thing that I really liked about this film were the supporting characters, particularly her grandfather, Charles McHendrick, played by oh, the incomparable yes. Charles yes. Ruggles. He was just so adorable. And I remember yes. even liking his character when I was a little wee one, just thinking he was just so cheeky mm -hmm. and just so funny. And I actually wrote down one of his lines because I just thought it was so stinking funny about how when he first is introduced to uh, Susan playing Sharon coming back from camp and she says that she's making a memory of how he smells like tobacco and yeah. peppermint and then he says well I'll tell you what I take the peppermint for my indigestion and as for the tobacco it's to make your grandmother mad and the way that he delivers it he's just so cheeky and it's just so funny and He's such yeah. a heartwarming part of this film, even though he's only on screen for a really short period of time, because he comes to the defense of his granddaughter when when the grandmother is ridiculing Sharon because of her short hair. And he says that he likes it. And later, when she's actually revealed to be Susan, she lets the mother and daughter have a moment together and has the grandmother wait in the wings and. It's just fun how he's kind of a part of it all from the very beginning, and he's just very sweet. Ashley, yeah. Ashley, let me tell you this. Why you guys steal my classic maker? Seriously. <laughs> 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 I mean, I'm right there with you. That I love that. Uh, what was his name? Charles Charles Ruggles, Ruggles I, yeah. He was, oh my yeah. gosh. Delightful, he was right? Like Perfect. He was like he was perfect a breath for that. of fresh air, and he was like the cherry on yes. top. Yeah, I love that he was willing to conspire to get the to. He wasn't like he wasn't mad at. Uh, I guess it was, was it Sharon or Susan. I got that confused. It was Susan it was, as Sharon. Susan as Sharon. Yeah, and that he was. Yeah, like you said, that he wanted to give uh, her and her mom uh, that moment, and it was just like uh, he was just yeah he was totally totally delightful. Loved him so much. I wanted him to be at the end. Was he at the end? I don't think he was at the end. Was he? He was. Yeah. He was the very, yeah, very they end. Were, oh, they were the, in the, the very wedding. end scene yeah, yeah. for like just kind of like the panoramic shot as they were going yeah, in. That's yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I would have liked to have seen him in a little bit more because I just liked him so much. But yeah, that was my classic maker. So again, thanks a lot for stealing that. Maybe you should get being boozled for that, Ashley. But I think not. That wasn't but the term, I'm glad so. that we All had right, that in fine. common because he was just so delightful. Yeah, I totally agree. Paul, what was a delightful thing for you for this movie? 
Um, as soon as the movie began, the delightful music of the Sherman Brothers came on, and it was just so nice. I really liked the music in this film. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, the Parent Trap at the beginning and Let's Get Together uh, later on in the movie. And if you don't know who the Sherman Brothers are, you need to look them up because they're one of the best mu music I mean, writers their music out there. and Mary Poppins is fantastic. I will I'm yeah. complete behind really that. I wasn't I wasn't really feeling it in this one, but okay, that's that's fine. It's good. They're good. Do you know Next. who who sang the opening song, Paul? Um, Annette Funicello and somebody else. Yes, Annette full of jello else. and oh, who yes. was the other person, Ashley? I don't know the other person. All I can tell you was Annette <laughs> Funicello and she was best known at that time for being on the original Mickey Mouse Club. So she was kind of like a teen heartthrob oh. at the time. So they were trying to get into the teen scene by having her sing that duet. And actually there was a version of her let's get together at the dance as well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. cool. Oh yeah. that That's right. Um, I, it's interesting. Tommy Sands was uh, was the male performer yes. in that, and they were actually both shooting Babes in Toyland at the same time, and they were called yes. over to sing this. So I thought that was a cool I connection. Was, yes, that's right. Yeah, um, but you like the the music on the whole, or just the Sherman Brothers pieces, Paul? The Sherman Brothers. The music, the the audio score by the person I previously <laughs> mentioned was fine. <laughs> the forgettable what? person. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're no Sherman Brothers. And I mean, no, they're no hey. John Billiams. So I mean, really, yeah. the, oh, there we go. <laughs> very good, very good, Paul. So uh, the 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 music. Uh, let's go back to uh, Celeste. What's something? Oh, actually, no. Let's go to classic makers now. But since I did mine already, let me go ahead and do my other like that I liked, which may be some one of your classic makers, guys. Maureen O'Hara as Maggie, is, oh. she was just so winsome for me, um, except yeah. for her domestic abuse. I didn't really care for that. But everything else. Oh, come just, on. Oh, excuse me, Paul. <laughs> Sorry. Very, Paul's a fan of domestic abuse. I, just, yeah, I loved her character, how she was just so, she was so charming and I just, very enjoyable to watch and uh, really enjoyed her as Maggie. So, uh Let's see. Let's go well, for classic makers. Let's go to Celeste. Were any of the characters your classic maker or was there some other com uh, element of this film that you love the most? Um, I think the general feel of the movie was my classic maker. It just had Aww. this this feel of of it's fun that we're dealing with serious subjects here, but we're going to do it in a fun way and in a way that, you know, doesn't make you all sad and upset. I mean, you have your moments, but it was just a nice, lighthearted movie. So, see, Paul yeah. Celeste agrees with you that domestic abuse is fun and lighthearted. It's great. No. <laughs> no. See? <laughs> no. <laughs> Want to clarify, I don't... Never mind. You know I don't. <laughs> I know, of course. No. I'm totally... We are... The it's retro all rewind, fun. The Retro Rewind podcast. Just like none this of podcast. Its, none of its <laughs> members condone domestic abuse in any form at all. We are just making light to because that's a subjects. small part of this film. <sighs> now you make me feel bad, Paul. Thanks a lot. Okay. Anyway, hey, Celeste, the this overall podcast is just like the film. <laughs> the overall fun is what was your classic maker? Fantastic. Um, uh, Ashley. Did the overall fun happen to be the thing you love the most, or was there something else? It was not. Actually, my classic maker was a lot of the dialogue in the movie. It was just so memorable, and it still packs a punch 60 years later. I think of the I maid. I can't believe it's 60 years ago. Yeah, I cannot 60 believe 60 years that. ago, but honestly, some <clears throat> of the lines. Did you say packs a punch? I thought we were not talking about domestic violence like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh no! Oh no! No no no! Then let me. We, I, we do okay, not. Go, please continue. Let me rephrase. There's a lot of classic one-liners <laughs> in this film, especially from the maid Verbena, when she says, yes. "I'm not saying a word, not one single not wor word." One and the word. fact that it kept coming back in her delivery, she was yeah. just spot on. Una Martel was so good playing this cheeky, in everyone's business maid, and the way that she delivered that was great. And I think of some of the some of the things that people said to each other, like um, the house staff at the McKendrick house saying, wait till your grandmother sees your hair. 
and just how serious they were. And it made me laugh each time. And then I go back to that line delivered by the grandfather about to make your grandmother mad. And their delivery is just spot on each time. And it has to do with that classic dialogue. And you think of the conversation that um, Sharon is having a Susan with her father. And he asks, how do you think of Vicky? And she's like, I've always wanted a sister. And it's just yes, so, that's so great. Oh so, my gosh. so funny. And then I even think of later on when um, when Susan and the mother show back up. And she's introduced to Vicky and she she goes up to Mrs. Robinson and she goes, oh, Vicky, you're just as beautiful as you've described and, or something along those lines. And it's just so flawlessly delivered. And then she's like, yes. I'm Mrs. Robinson. And it's just yes. oh, the yes. writing. So I can't tell you how many times <laughs> I found myself just giggling over these silly little lines. And it's it's amazing to me, like how funny something that was funny then can still be funny to me now. Absolutely. The interaction between the grandfather and Maureen O'Hara when she was getting ready, where he's basically going, "Oh, oh, yes. is lovely." I forgot about you're, that. That's you're so such great. a brave woman for wearing yeah, your aging hair like with that. grace and that's dignity, the, or something like that. Like, so good. It was so well done that you're like, "Oh my gosh, I know what he's doing," exactly. but he's doing yeah. it in such and a way she's that's saying, like. That's the worst possible thing anyone could ever say. <laughs> and just oh, the sorry, delivery dude. of these lines, they're just, they're so good. Yes. I was sorry. surprised. There were a lot of tones uh, in that conversation. And then when uh, the mother, Marino hair characters, meets Vicky, and there were a lot of underlying tones that I didn't recognize as a kid. Yes, I mean, you, yes, as yes. a kid, you know what's going on. Yeah. But the way that it's written exactly. and like little digs that each of them are giving to each other, it is so, I, I have to agree, it's very well written. This, even by this, today's standards, those This scenes. movie wins Absolutely. the award for passive aggressiveness. Yes. <laughs> but it does it but they do so it in, good. I was about to say, yeah, I was about to say, they do in a way of, of grace and tact that is yeah. missing in today's culture. That is true. Totally agree with that. Absolutely. Well, what was the most graceful and or tactful and or uh, funnest part for you, Paul? Well, I, I'd be, no one has mentioned Haley Mills, oh. so I'm curious if Haley Mills that, is your cosmic. I was about to say, yes, it's similar to what you were saying, um, Francisco. For me, it's the cast. Um, between... Uh, I thought the dad was fine, but Maureen O'Hare yeah. and 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 the grandfather and all the people that we mentioned, but especially Haley Mills. I mean, she is just a gem, and it's 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 weird to call her one of the the nation's uh, greatest treasures because she's not from the U.S. But <laughs> hey, who is? But anyway, <laughs> people, animals. Oh, that's true. There's, I'm sure. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna get go there. But anyway, no, just the cast was delightful in this. How many uh, how many hot topics can we touch on tonight during this wholesome parent see. trap discussion? Racism, abuse. <laughs> <laughs> this is run the gamut. Okay, um, okay, but the whole cast was your classmaker. Oh, nice. So, but yeah. you you would think that the the dad Mitch played by Keith, none other Brian than Brian Keith. Brian Keith, yeah, that's Popeye right. himself. Uncle Bill for family affair. Yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Him. Uh, he was the weakest link goodbye, you'd say? Um, I don't know if he's the weakest link, but of the... of The, the main characters. I mean, I, he, he was still... He did not do a bad job. He no, was still yeah, I wasn't trying to, to say that. Um, but it, he wasn't as memorable as some of the other characters is what I mean. So he wasn't a scene stealer. He, no... But I do like the way he lit up sometimes. He just he did a good job. So yes, I'm not yes. I'm not trying to discount him. Sorry, Brian, but <laughs> <laughs> may you rest in peace. Um yeah. awesome guys. 